Hello, Rife. How are you guys? I hope you're doing okay. Hope you've had a good week. And we're at the end of January now. We're going into February, which is good. January's been a very long month. So this week, we are going to try doing things a little bit differently. So today, you have got two different options. Well, actually, three different options you could do. The first one and the second one is you can choose one of the videos on the links below and watch that with our story. Our story is Paul and Silas in jail this week. And there are two videos. You can either watch both the videos or just one video. And then you can skip forward on this video and listen to our reflection and prayer, our thoughts on the video. Or you can carry on watching this video and I'm going to read the part in this book that we've been looking at together with the story and then um, carry on and carry on to watch the whole video. Or if you really want to, you can do all three. It's up to you. I'm going to read the story now and then you can come back and listen to the reflection. And I've got some pictures for you this week as well. So here we go. And this chapter is called Pulling and Yanking, Quaking and Waking. And it's Acts chapter 16, verses 16 to 40. A few days later, so there's a few things that have happened before that that you might want to find out about. We were on our way to the river again when we saw a girl who had an evil spirit inside her. Let's call her Nova. Nova worked for some people who treated her very badly and used her to make money by telling people their fortunes. As soon as Nova spotted Paul, she ran right up to him and then, every, and then followed all of us everywhere. And I mean everywhere. She kept shouting whenever anyone else came near, saying things like, these guys are God slaves. They want to tell you how to be saved. She was making everyone stare and no one would come near us. Paul was getting rather annoyed. So a few days later, he just turned around to her and told the evil spirit to leave. In the name of Jesus, leave her alone. And it went just like that. Done. So if you're Nova, not having the evil spirit anymore was pretty darn awesome. But if you're her boss and suddenly she can't tell fortunes anymore and get you money because it was the evil spirit who was making her do that, then you might not be so pleased. Nova's bosses were indeed not so pleased and they grabbed Paul and Silas and took them to the city leaders. These men are ruining everything, they said. They're Jews. everything yeah he's right they all crushed in closer and closer to Paul and Silas and the leaders didn't even stop them in fact they egged the crowd on the closer they got the smaller the space that Paul and Silas were standing in they kept on coming and then they were pulling and yanking all their clothes Paul and Silas tried to hold on to their pants at least but they even took those it didn't get any better. When they'd taken all their clothes, and I mean all their clothes, the city leaders had Paul and Silas dragged away and hit with sticks until they could hardly move and then thrown into prison with a guard on the door. The guard put them in the deepest part of the prison and chained their feet to the walls. He was determined they weren't going to escape. But... Guess what happened next? Well, I'm sure you haven't forgotten what happened when Peter was in prison. So maybe it won't be a surprise that. Now, I wonder if you can remember what happened when Peter was in prison. Maybe you might want to tell your mum or dad or somebody else what you can remember. Let's get back to the story. Paul and Silas didn't sleep at all. They just prayed all the time and sang lots of Jesus songs. And then the ground shook, really, really shook. And there was a super loud crack. 
every single door in the prison flew wide open and Paul and Silas's chains just fell on the floor. When the guard realised what was going on and saw all the prisoners coming out of their cells, he didn't know what to do. He knew he was going to get in mega trouble and was thinking of stabbing himself with his own sword before somebody else did it. But Paul stopped him. Don't, he shouted, don't do that. No one has actually escaped. Look, we're all still here. The guard looked around and realised that everyone was still there and they weren't even trying to get past him. He looked at Paul and Silas, who still didn't have any clothes, awkward, and knelt down in front of them. He was shaking all over like a wobbly jelly. Well, what do I have to do to be saved? He asked Paul. Can I do it now? Just choose to believe in Jesus, replied Paul. Then you and all of your family will be saved. So, in the middle of the night, and with no clothes on, Paul and Silas went back to the guard's house and told him and all his family about Jesus. The guards sorted out all their cuts and bruises and gave them something to wear. Phew! Then the whole family were baptised and had a super tasty fish biscuit meal to celebrate. In the morning, the city leaders sent some guards to let Paul and Silas out. So when the guard heard they were... When the guard they were staying with heard this, he said, you should leave, now is your chance to get out without anyone realising what's happened. But they stole our clothes and beat us up. They threw us in prison and now they want us to conveniently disappear. No way, if they want us to go away, they should come and tell us themselves. When the leaders heard what Paul and Silas were saying, they got a little bit scared because they realised they were Romans and beating up Romans was against the law. So you wouldn't want to get caught doing that now, would you? The leaders came out to Paul and Silas and said they were sorry and told them to go away. Paul and Silas left Philippi and on their way out, they popped back in to see Lydia and her friends and encouraged them to keep on following Jesus. Then they carried on with their journey. So I wonder what you thought about that story. So how did Paul and Silas feel when they um, were put in prison? Were they angry with God? Were they cross? Hmm. I don't think they were, were they? They praised God. They said they sang, sat in prison and they sang songs to God. And is that how we respond when we are put in prison, if we are locked up or locked down as we are at the moment, if we're in difficult times? I don't know if I would want to praise God if I was feeling that way. But what do you do when things get tough, when it's tough at home or at school or anywhere else? What do you do? Do you praise God or do you get a little bit cross and a bit worried? And if you had that, that chance to escape when the chains were taken off, would you escape? Or would you um, stay where they, where, where they were like Paul and Silas did? I don't know what I would do. But that's what it's like sometimes when you're a Christian, when you believe Jesus. You have to trust God that even though what you're going through is scary and hard, that he is in control of all of that. And sometimes trusting God doesn't mean doing the easy thing, but it means doing the right thing. And the right thing for Paul and Silas was to stay in prison. And because they did that, that prisoner guard, who was really quite sad at the time when he realised what had happened, um, turned round and followed Jesus. And he, not only did he follow Jesus, but he went and told his family. And then all of his family followed Jesus as well. So we're going to say a, a little prayer now and um, then I will speak to you guys again. Um, some of you I will speak to you this afternoon, actually, hopefully on our Zoom call. And the rest of you I will speak to again uh, next week. So let's pray. Jesus, thank you that you kept Paul and Silas safe while they were in prison. And thank you 
that um, they were able to praise and worship while they were chained up. And because of that, they were an example to those people that were also in prison with them. God, we thank you that Paul and Silas didn't take the easy route, but they chose the right route and they stayed where they were. And because of that, their faith, um, because of their faith, it led to bringing others to faith in you as well. And we thank you for that. Jesus, we pray as we go through this week that we will have a good week and that we will take the right, do the right thing instead of the easy thing in all of the decisions that we have to make. Amen. Amen. I hope you guys are okay and I'll speak to you soon. Bye. Bye.